So the Vaporfly 3 is here, and after doing some testing, I wanted to ask myself, is this the best version of the Vaporfly that we've seen, or does the V1 still steal my heart? Today, we're gonna to sit down, discuss, and find out. So welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be sitting down and comparing the three versions of the Vaporfly that have now been released, and answering the question, is this one my favorite so far? There's a lot to discuss. I'm not gonna go through every single detail. This is gonna be very much a pros and cons. I've done individual reviews on all of these shoes, so we're going to be talking about what I love about these ones and what I'm not so keen on, what gives the one that is my favourite the edge over the others. So if you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. We'll start by getting rid of that one and talking a little bit about these two. So here we have version one and version two, two very, very similar shoes, one main difference. Well, two main differences, one official, one unofficial. The Vaporfly version one came into my possession a year after it had been released and I was absolutely blown away by how good it is. This is my second pair. I used the last pair as much as I could and I still have them and I use them for training. This is a pair I picked up last Christmas in the sale on the Nike app for 100 pounds. Absolute bargain for such an incredible and in my opinion, the best racing shoe that I have ever used from any brand. This is my absolute favorite. Everything about this shoe is incredible. The foam is brilliant, the upper I love. Controversial potentially, the upper was something that a lot of people were not a fan of, but for me, this vapor weave material, plasticky in fact, just hugged my foot so tightly that I just felt so, so secure. And the lockdown I get in this shoe is far superior uh, than any other shoe that I've ever had for racing purposes. So I've got to say, this thing was absolutely incredible. I loved it. I set so many PBs in it, and it was such a joy to run in. And then this is where I kind of feel where things came unstuck a little bit, because version 2 came out, and there were a couple of things that changed about the shoe that just took the edge away from it. I'm not going to slate this shoe. I love it, and I still have put some great miles in them. I've already gone through two pairs of them. I think this is my third pair now, uh, and they become just such a good shoe shoe, very similar traits to the Vaporfly, and as you can see at version one, if you can see, they are literally exactly the same shape, geometry, there's nothing different. The main difference between these two shoes is the upper, complete change on the upper, so we lost the plastic vapor weave and we went to this more knit material, and then unofficially the foam for me felt so much more plasticky, a lot less bouncy, a little bit more firm, and it just kind of nullified uh, the experience that I had with the Vaporfly version one. And I think the problem with this shoe, in my mind when they released it, was instantly, how do you improve on the Vaporfly version one? Nike released such an incredible shoe. I can imagine the marketing meeting there, sat around the table, scratching their heads going, how do we, how do we make this better? And I think they just basically looked at all the complaints they had. And the most common complaint they had from the version one was the upper. So they tinkered with the upper uh, in, a, in a bid to make it more universally friendly. And for me, it just let the shoe down massively. I've never been able to get a good lockdown in the shoe. The laces changed, I'll just show you here. Version one, very standard laces, nothing particularly fancy there. But I think what they tried to do with the version two and now version three laces, you can see they've got ridges on them. So when you lock them in tightly, it helps hold the shoe in place. But yeah, the upper was never my friend in the version two, still isn't. I get so much movement in and around the heel. I never get a secure locked in feeling. If I'm running over any sort of camber or any kind of uneven surfaces, my ankle really does roll around in here a lot. And the lacing is just never something I've been able to get right in this shoe. That combined with the foam feeling slightly different, meant that it was still a great shoe, but it didn't stand out above the rest like version one did. And then two years later, we see the launch of version three, the one that has been released uh, this year. I think the prototype colorway was back in March or February, and then the main drop was in April. That's when I got my pair. A massively different shoe. In terms of the look and the feel, it is just such a positive update for me anyway. I know it's not for a lot of you guys. I've seen a lot of the comments from what you've uh, posted on my previous videos, but I've got to say for me, this is a welcome change from version two. I was really concerned um, about what they were going to do with version 3, how it was going to look when I saw the prototype pictures coming out on Instagram and social media. I kind of was shaking my head thinking, ah, oh, this is, no, I'm not so keen on it. But I was convinced to give it a go anyway, and I'm really, really happy that I did because I do feel that this has stepped back up uh, from version 1. Main changes in this, the upper again 
we're still with that fly knit material, different kind of uh, weaves around the shoe, thinner on the top, sort of thicker in other areas, but we're still going with that knit upper rather than that plasticky vapor weave that we had in version one. The geometry of the midsole has completely changed from version uh, one and two to version three. We've got cutouts here, we've got a groove down the middle here, and we've got a wider forefoot, and we've got a little bit more foam under the forefoot, meaning it's a bit of a softer landing, uh, and we've got more of a chiseled out heel at the back here realistically made to be more supportive. Um, I'm going to say straight away, there's one thing with the shoe that stands out to me, which just, oh, it just docks a few points off it. It's a great shoe and I love it. But instantly, this midfoot area here is thinner. I've measured it, it's thinner than version one and version two. So what that means is by increasing the width on this forefoot pad here, you have a lovely landing sensation when you are landing sort of midfoot forefoot. You've got that lovely compression, wider forefoot, brilliant bounce off. The foam is softer again, just like version one and I was delighted to feel that. If for me, when I get a bit lazy, a bit sloppy, when I'm running downhill and I lean back a bit, which I know I shouldn't, but I do, uh, and I kind of land a little bit more around this area, it is extremely wobbly. And that makes me fear for people that are heel strikers or very much kind of midfoot towards the rear of the shoe. If you're landing on this area, I can imagine the sensation is gonna be a lot more unstable than Nike intended it to be. So it does kind of very much start out very wide at the top here, but then streamline itself. And what that does for me as a runner anyway, it still keeps the shoe aggressive. And that's what I want and it does work for me, but I completely appreciate it's not gonna work for everyone else. As I said, that combined with the softer foam, means you've kind of got this alpha fly uh, vapor fly feeling when you land that wider platform super cushioned super soft the airpods are very distinctive in the alpha fly so yeah you don't get that in this but that kind of wider forefoot you do notice it you do get a lovely landing sensation and you do get a fantastic bounce so i've got to say it's definitely kind of taken that phone back to version one it's big steps forward but it is a big change and I am, of course, yet to race in this shoe. I put a great long run in it and I loved it. And I've got to say with this shoe, uh, when I was going through the gears, the faster I went in the shoe, it got better, which is a positive sign because that's what I want when I'm racing. I'm not here to do slower miles in it. This is a racing shoe that I want to lace up and go fast. Obviously, when I go fast, I always find the Vaporfly uh, puts me more towards my forefoot as a runner. And so it just ended up working really, really well. It just has one downside, which I still feel gives the version one the edge. And again, it is that upper. This knit upper, I just don't think is gonna give anybody any form of security. It's the one gripe I've seen from everybody. Everyone's talking about it. And I have to agree, again, the lockdown is just something that it was better in my second run from my first run, but it's still not quite right. And I still get that V2 vibe from it where I just can't quite lock it in. Granted, the heel area, I feel much more secure, a lot less wobble. That's great, that's eliminated that. So I do feel that's why it is such a good improvement from version two. But this lacing along the top here, extra baggy material here, this is such, volume in the toe box area yes i'm all for the width i it works for me with a wider foot but it's so deep as well and they've got all this extra material bunching up and it just feels a sloppy lockdown and that is its one drawback the wobble i can deal with because i'm not usually running uh, back that far i appreciate it won't work for everyone uh, that's just when i get a bit sloppy if i stay on my forefoot it is an absolute winner of a shoe, but I just feel that's where the Vaporfly version one still has the edge, and it's still probably gonna edge it out as a favorite for me when it comes to racing. The next few races, I will absolutely use this. It deserves racing time, and it's gonna get it, and it's gonna get a lot of it. Um, I'm absolutely gonna get my money's worth, but I do feel like they, I still gotta go back to this and go, yeah, the upper wasn't everyone's favorite, but it worked for me. It keeps my foot locked in. I could get the best lockdown in this shoe, the foams, brilliant, everything else matches up, but the upper just takes the win. So in terms of my thoughts on how I would rank each of these shoes, it would definitely be version two uh, at the bottom. As I said, still a solid, I don't do scores and reviews and stuff, but if, you know, if I was to give it some kind of score, so it was like an eight and eight and a half out of 10 shoe, it's a good one, but there's just too many 
things going wrong with that shoe that just don't make it special as version one or three. And if I was to rank the other two, I think it would probably be version three, then version one still, but there's such little difference in it. I've got to, got to hammer that home. I feel like this is such a good improvement, but I just feel this sloppiness here uh, just docks it a few points. That's, let's say 9.25 and the version one is a 9.5. There really isn't that much in it. And I do really am grateful and feel like Nike have taken this shoe in a good direction. I know a lot of you don't, and I have been reading so many of your comments I value them it's great to hear it's great to hear a lot of your thoughts on it some of you have already raced in it set some massive PBs in it and it's just really positive to hear that and it's also really positive to hear from the people it's not working for and I would love to hear for the people that it doesn't work for is it because you land further back do you find it more unstable because you're a heel striker do you notice this wobble I'd love to hear your thoughts that's what it's all about getting those comments down there so that people can go and read and make some more informed decisions as to if they want to invest in these shoes because let's be honest with you this cost me 235 pounds it is not cheap but definitely as I said massive kudos for me, bringing it back up there, feeling really good, gonna get some good runs in this shoe, good summer races, starting this weekend at the Hackney Half, and I'm gonna get some more speed work in there soon. Buzzing for that, but yeah, I've gotta say, the V1 still is the GOAT for me. Um, but it is only just. This thing is really good and I can't wait to see what they do in version four. Hashtag bring back the vapor weave. That's it for me today, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What are your thoughts on these shoes? How do you rank the versions? Are you the same as me? Or do you have a slightly different order? Let me know, I'd love to hear from you there. That's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed it, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. I'll see you in the next one. Until then.